the chemical compound ethane has the chemical formula C2H6. One thing we notice about this compound is that whenever we have twice as many hydrogens as carbon plus two, so if we have a CN molecule, we end up having 2N plus two hydrogens, as we do in this case, we have a class of compounds called alkanes. And alkanes are important because all the carbon-carbon bonds in an alkane will be single bonds. So from the chemical formula, this will give us some good clues in how to construct the Lewis structure for this compound. We notice each carbon contributes four valence electrons. We have six hydrogens, which each contribute one. So this makes this a 14 electron compound. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 electrons in ethane, which is the name that we use for a two carbon unit. If we replace one of the hydrogen atoms of ethane with a fluorine atom, we end up with a compound ethyl fluoride. In this particular compound, we have a total of 20 electrons, and we can satisfy the duet and octet rules by single bonds amongst all the compound, all the uh, elements in this particular compound. If we substitute the fluorine of ethyl fluoride with a chlorine atom, we end up with a compound ethyl chloride. Ethyl chloride is an organic compound that evaporates very quickly, particularly if it's put on the skin. So therefore it is used uh, to treat injuries and the quick evaporation of the compound from the skin cools the area and has some of the same effect as applying ice to a sore limb. One thing we notice here is that the structure with chlorine is almost identical to the Lewis structure in the case of fluorine. We have all single bonds and we notice that even though chlorine can ex expand the octet, it doesn't need to do so in this particular compound. In general, if we have chlorine in organic compounds, it is very rare for it to expand the octet. Generally, the cases where we will expand the octet for chlorine will be in compounds where chlorine is directly attached to very electronegative elements, such as oxygen. If we take ethyl chloride and replace one of the hydrogens with a bromine atom, we can make one of two different compounds. In the first case, we notice that we've attached the bromine to exactly the same carbon that the chlorine atom was attached to. In this case, we call this 1-bromo-1-chloroethane. And it's because we always number it to have the lowest possible numbers. Since both bromine and chlorine are attached to the same carbon, this is the number one carbon, we name it the bromo before the chloro part because B becomes before C in the alphabet. So when we name the substituents for a compound, we go in alphabetical order. In this compound, the bromine atom is attached to this carbon. This chl the chlorine atom is attached to a different carbon. So in this case, we call this 1-bromo-2-chloroethane. This carbon becomes the one carbon because it's the bromine is attached to it and we name it bromo before chloro because B comes before C. So we've seen that in this case with the bromo chloroethanes, there are two distinct isomers and the two compounds will have different chemical properties. Here we have an interesting compound in which it looks like we replaced two of the hydrogen atoms of ethane by hydroxy OH groups. You'll recall that when we have one OH group attached directly to a carbon, we call that compound an alcohol. So in a certain sort of way, we can think of this as a dialcohol because there are two alcohol groups attached. One interesting feature of alcohol groups 
which is not so obvious with the simple alcohols, is that as we add more OH groups to the molecule, the molecule tends to have the property of sweet taste. So you have to be very careful. This is an extremely poisonous compound. And part of its danger is the fact that it can be inadvertently consumed because it doesn't have a bad taste. It actually has a sweet taste. This compound could be called 1,2-dihydroxyethane, but it is most usually named as ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol is very widely used as an antifreeze. So because of its sweet taste, it's very important if you're changing the antifreeze to your car that you don't leave any puddles of the antifreeze underneath the car in a street where pets might accidentally consume it because they'll be attracted to it and this is an incredibly uh, poisonous compound. So this is ethylene glycol. The next member of the alkane series is the three carbon compound called propane. Propane has the chemical formula C3H8. And we notice that it fits the form CnH2 2n plus 2, confirming that it is an alkane. Because it's an alkane, it has entirely carbon-carbon single bonds. In a three-carbon unit, we use the prop, P-R-O-P, a prefix for those units. The famous American singer-songwriter Carly Simon actually wrote a song about this compound called Your Propane. And it has the famous line, your propane. You probably think that you've got three carbons, your propane. So that's a good way to remember that propane is the three carbon alkane. If we replace one of the hydrogen atoms with a chlorine atom, we end up with a compound called propyl chloride. Now it turns out that we have two different types of carbon to which we can attach the chlorine. We could attach it to one of the carbons at the end, this one or this one. These are equivalent. Or we can attach it to the middle carbon. Those two different circumstances will give different compounds. So if we have the chlorine at the end attached to one of the end carbons, we can call it n propyl chloride, the N being short for normal or using the other style of nomenclature that we've been using, we can call it 1-chloropropane. That's one because it's on the first carbon. We always, we wouldn't call it as 3-chloro because we always number it to have the lowest possible numbers. So this is either 1-chloropropane or N-propyl chloride. Here, we've attached the chlorine atom to the middle carbon. In this case, we can call it 2-chloropropane, or the other slightly older style is to call it isopropyl chloride. Isopropyl means that we have a three carbon unit and our substituent is going to be attached to the center carbon. So either 2-chloropropane or isopropyl chloride. And note that this is distinct from the compound where the chlorine is attached to the first carbon, the n-propyl chloride or 1-chloropropane. In this particular compound, we replaced one of the hydrogens of propane by an OH hydroxyl group, also called an alcohol group. So here we have a new alcohol based upon the propane skeleton. And we notice that the alcohol group, the OH group, is attached to the center carbon, the central carbon. So we can call this 2-propanol, two 2-propyl two alcohol, 2 because this is the 1-2 carbon, so it's often called 2-propanol, or it's more commonly known as isopropanol. Again, the iso is because it's attached to the center carbon. This isopropyl alcohol is also the material that is commonly sold as rubbing alcohol. So, so far we've seen that wood alcohol is methanol, grain alcohol is ethanol, and then rubbing alcohol is isopropanol. 
if we attach the OH group to one of the N carbons, we end up with a distinct chemical compound. So in this case, we would call this compound 1-propanol, one, 1 because the alcohol group is attached directly to the first carbon. It is also sometimes called N-propanol. Again, the N is for normal, and it's normal because we have a straight chain, and we're attaching the substituent to the end. So this is N-propanol or 1-propanol. Here, we've replaced two of the hydrogen atoms of propane with chlorine atoms. This class of compounds where we take an alkane and we replace one or more of the hydrogen atoms with a halide atom, we call alkyl halides. So this is an alkyl halide. And we notice that both of the chlorine atoms are attached to the same carbon. So using the rules that we've learned so far, this would be 1,1-dichloropropane. For this alkyl halide, we have one chlorine atom attached to an N carbon and one chlorine atom attached to a central carbon. Starting at this end, so we we'll get the lowest possible number, this is going to be 1,2-dichloropropane. One, 1,2 two because this is the first carbon, this is the second carbon. It is dichloro because we have two chloro groups. And it's propane because that's the name we use for a three carbon alkane. Here we have one more dichloropropane. But notice in this case that though this chlorine is attached to an end carbon, this chlorine is attached to an end carbon, they're not attached to the same end carbon. There are two opposite ends of the molecule. So therefore, we can call this the first carbon, but then we have to continue down the chain. So this is carbon number one. This is carbon number two, makes this carbon number three. So this particular compound here is going to be 1,3-dichloropropane. So notice this is distinct from the 1,1-dichloro, where the two chlorine atoms were attached to the same N carbon atom. So here we have the 1,3-dichloropropane.